So a little detour here. Uh, I got to make these parts for work, and uh, I thought it was a good time to talk a little bit about dual shield flex core wire and what it's good for and what it's not good for and how I use it. I see a lot of guys welding stuff on YouTube, and that's great. I think you know that's how I learn. But there's some things that you don't want to short circuit MIG, and it's really important to know the limitations to short circuit MIG. Basically to me, it's anything over a quarter inch. I don't short circuit MIG anything over a quarter inch. If it's gonna see a lot of vibration or stresses or strains, uh, I might not even use it at all, even if it is less than quarter inch. Um, but there is an alternative that you can, that's still structurally strong, you can still MIG weld or using a wire feeder. Dual shield flex core wire and a welding positioner can make anybody a hero. You can see this stuff lays down really good and it's really strong and it's really easy to learn how to weld it. I should clarify something about what I said earlier about not welding anything over quarter inch short circuit MIG. Now in all honesty, I weld things over quarter inch for myself or for little things that don't really matter that aren't structural. But something to consider is if somebody is coming to you and paying you for your welding services, if a weld comes apart, it's really not a good look. And this dual shield is really cheap insurance. The downside to this stuff is if heat input or distortion is an issue, this stuff flows like lava, so you might want to consider something like TIG or something else. This is a picture of the dual shield flux core wire under my microscope. And as you can see, it's hollow on the inside and filled with belly button lint, filled with flux. And the purpose for that flux is in combination with the shielding gas that comes out of the bottle, it burns when you're welding and creates a perfect weld environment for your weld and protects it from the atmosphere. You really shouldn't hold all thread like this with a cutoff wheel, but if you do, if you use this portion of your cutoff wheel right here, it won't kick on you. I don't remember how to use this fancy caulk gun. I don't use it that often. Looks like it goes in here. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking real good. There we go. 
goes. And it mixes inside. See it coming up right here? It mixes inside this tube. The two parts. You gotta squirt a little bit out until it's a different color. See how it's a slightly different color? It's ready to go. The silty stuff is like the industry standard for this, it seems like. I haven't seen it on a lot of prints. And it's super expensive too. They don't give it away. What you want to do if you're doing this is make sure you get it everywhere but the hole, like I'm doing. It's really important. These columns are just gonna get buried in the stone that you see right here. And then the wood posts are gonna go on top of them with a hole drilled in the middle. And you can see it's gonna be just like the existing deck here. And I just thought I'd show you guys this. This is nothing, I know it's nothing exciting, but this is real welder work. 90% of the time you're not doing anything. You're not building epic handrails. A lot of the time I'm just doing little stuff like this. And I had the extra footage and I thought I'd show you guys.